here this morning is going to be coming from Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses 2 through 10. Galatians, sixth chapter, verses 2 through 10. And it reads, Bear one another burden, and therefore fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone <coughs> thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each man must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever a man sows, this will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, the last verse, so then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially those who are in the household of faith. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hear of his word. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Turn to the doctors and the nurses dealing with those who are suffering from COVID. Right now, the city government, the state government, and the national government, right now, we and women on the battlefield, God. And I'm going to ask for special blessings upon our children. Turn to the teachers who are teaching them, God. Keep them safe, God. So, God, we ask you. Bless this service. And whatever we do here today, God, we hope that it will please you. Please in the name of Christ. Yes, Lord. Take us through this week, God. As we eat us, leave. Walk with us and talk with us as we move through this week. As we travel along this tedious journey, God, we have learned that if we can't make it without you, we need you every step of the way. So, God, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and offer this prayer.
us pray. God, we thank you for these offerings. We thank you for the tithes that we're dealing through today. We pray that you bless the giver in a mighty special way. And bless this church, St. John, to use these offerings and tithes in a way which is pleasing to your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank you, God.
We come in with a thanks for heart. We know, God, that you know the proudest, the sick and the shed ends, and the bereaved families. God, we just ask that you look up here on Sister Martin right now. Bless her in a mighty special way. She's been on this battlefield for a long time, and she needs you right now. So we pray that you just touch her right now. Heal her body right now. Give her strength. Because sometimes, God, when you do things, when you have your way, Satan have a way of coming up and trying to make things bad. But we ask that you will have your way. Touch her heart right now and let her know, God, that you never make some mistake. Thank you for what you've done. Brother Morgan, we just want to say we love him. He was a member of this church. He was on the trustee board. He attended classes. So we ask that you have mercy. We pray that you just bless that Morgan family in a mighty special way. Be with me. Oh, God, touch the hearts right now. I know you hear my prayers. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Allow the Spirit to take control and walk with them and talk with them and be with them and guide them and lead them in a righteous way. And in this church, St. John, we pray, God, that you just bless us all in a mighty special way. We pray that you just touch our hearts in a mighty special way. And then God, I ask of you one day, teach us, teach us, God, to know our day. It is important for man to die once. But after this, the judgment will come. And God, we want to be able to hear you when you call us by name. Your voice said, well done. My good and faithful servant. You've been faithful on a few days. Come on up. And I'll make you ruler over me.
allow the Holy Spirit to use me. That your word will come forth today. That may give someone a little strength, a little comfort. To let them know that you are God that will never leave us. That you are with us always and all of the times. Some of us went through some trouble this week. But you was right there. Some of us had some financial problems this week, but you was right there. Someone had trouble on their jobs, but you was right there. Someone may have lost their loved ones, but you was right there. So God, we just want to say thank you. Times get hard for us, but we still say thank you. Oh, if we had a thousand tongues, we could say thank you enough for all of the good things that you have done for each and every one of us. Bind Satan from our fist in the name of Jesus. Amen. And thank you, God. In Exodus, we thank God for our visitors. Amen. And we ask that God just continue to bless you. Amen. And your family. Amen. ago, I preached a sermon when I move, you move, from 1 Kings 17, verses 2 through 14, and in doing that, making a clear cut statement that I believe that everybody needs to know and believe in that is God has created every one of us to live by faith. Right. And as a consequence, every child of God 
is wired to perform and live by faith. All right. Now, what that means is that if God created you to live by faith, that means no matter how good you get as becoming a Christian, no matter how much you got your stuff together for real, if you don't keep your faith moving, if you don't keep your faith moving, church, I'm telling you, it's going to be pretty tough on you. Because the Bible clearly teaches us that uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I say this before I give my text. God, he's not pleased by who has the best memory. God is not impressed by virtue of the fact that you come to Sunday school every Sunday. You come to church every Sunday. If you give your tithes and you give your offering, you stand on the usher board, you work in the finance room, you stand up at the pulpit. No, he's not. God is pleased by faith. If you do it in faith. Because let me remind you, let me remind you just that everybody in God's house is not going to hell. And you see, we might as well get this in our mind. You know, sometimes we act, try to act like and pretend that we know God when we do everything that God tells us not to do. So what I want to use today as a subject when God said, move. Last time it was when I moved, you moved. But today we want to talk about when God said, move. One of the hardest struggles is knowing what God is telling you to do. When God is telling you to stay and when he instructs you to move forward. One of the hardest struggles is knowing what God is telling you to do. When God is saying to stay and when he is saying to move. Not knowing is this is the family's pressure or is it yourself? Fasting and praying and still not hearing clearly from God while you are in the will and the way of God. About what he wants you to do and where he wants you to go. And oftentimes, uh, listening to the news and it always talk about wars and rumors of war. We say it over in Matthew 24 and verse 26, it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Amen. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Amen. Yep. You know, I told you that I began to look at the United States and their forces getting ready to go to war. We talked about before, a soldier can be allowed to be an active member of the armed forces. He or she must go under training. Amen. Yeah. They must undergo physically training and mentally training to prepare themselves to defend this country. Meaning that they must be physically and mentally fit for war. Amen. They must go undergo physical training.
training and mentally training and to prepare them to defend this country. In other words, what I'm saying that they must be physically and mentally fit for war. And they also must know the chain of a man and how to follow orders without question. We talked about this and talked about this in, in, in our uh, uh, Bible study one night. They must be taught obedience. You see, I found out that that's kind of hard for some of us to do. You see, we always want to be right and we want to tell everybody else how to do things, but we don't have ourselves together. But let me tell you something. Satan uh, does not just want to be sinful to God by himself. In other words, what I'm trying to tell us, he wants you. He wants us to be on the same side with him. In other words, he wants us to go down yonder instead of up yonder. And the Bible teaches us, it tells us in, in 1 Peter 5 and 8, he said, be so, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking to body, seeking whom he may devour. And to ask God, stay with me. And to ask God to bless this or that before the waste are removed undermines the promise of him moving on behalf of those who will seek his face. And to expect God to bless that is kind of like throwing fertilizer, dirt and water on concrete and expected it to grow. It won't work. And you see, this may seem radical to you, but don't you know that there is some stuff that God has to do? We might not like what we do, but it's some things that God has to do. You see, once I ease and evicted every person, then I can move to the fact that maybe this just might be a test. Some things we go through, maybe it might just be a test. And then after I remove all of the stuff that doesn't please my father any kind of way, life and path, why I'm not hearing God as I should. Have you ever thought about the fact maybe it could have been you? And I have to ask myself every now and then, why is it that God will let me be close to him and still not tell me exactly what he wants me to do? It is because every now and then, God will set you up for a faith move. Can, can I say that again? He will set you up for a faith move. And tell your neighbor that this is a faith move. On this Christian journey that we all now, it's a faith move. A faith moves when you don't know exactly, particularly what the Lord is saying. But you do know that the Lord is saying just start walking and I'll show you on the way. And there are times, uh, moments in this where God will not tell you uh, directly exactly what he wants you to do, but he's going to see if you will trust him. Amen. And that's for us. We say that we trust God, but we don't want to do what he tells us to do. If you love God, like we say that we love him, if he tells you to love your brothers and your sisters, you will love your brothers and sisters. Am I right about it? If, you, if, if he tells you to forgive one another, then you will forgive one another. Now, how in the world do you expect God to forgive you? And you don't know God, you've never seen him, and you can't forgive your brother and sister that's right here on the same team with you. Wow. 
See, what has happened is that a lot of us, we start listening to other people. I, I heard some of this in the Sunday school that we start listening to other people to what other people say, and we ain't doing nothing that God say do. We put God on the back burner. And check, we put God on the back burner. And that is one of the reasons why. That is one of the reasons why we have so much hell in the church today. Come on. Because people are not listening to God's word. We hear it, we can say it, but we don't listen and do what he tells us to do. Ain't no need. My pastor used to tell me all the time, ain't no need to come to hood. If you ain't gonna do what God says. He used to tell me you, you might as well stay at home. Die and go to hell. If you ain't going to do nothing, he tell you. And let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. See, this, I, I heard this this morning, that a lot of times these things are not being preached. See, we try to, try to lift everybody up. We always want to tell everybody they're going to hell. But let me tell you something. It's a place called hell. Look at the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man went to hell. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. And he was so hot. We all start thinking about this. Thinking about this here. It's a time we're going to leave here. God is not always going to give you the exact direction as to where you're going or where he is taking you to. Sometimes God will tell you, just start walking. Genesis 12. Come here, Abraham. Sure I will, Brother Lewis. God told me in the 12th chapter of Genesis to get away from my children and my acquaintance and I will show you a way to God. In other words, what he's saying, if you get away from some of your people, I'm going to bless you. Are, are y'all with me? He said, I will make you a blessing. And I will cause others to bless you. Ain't it kind of strange how folk can talk about you and allow you to do all things about you? But God is still blessing you. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's strange. All right. So, so wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Where am I going, God? He said, I tell you on the way. So Abraham, what Abraham has to do is Abraham has to leave his comfort zone. Right. Sometimes we get so Sometimes when God give us enough food, sometimes when he give us clothes to put on our backs, sometimes when he give us a shelter somewhere we can lay our head down, sometimes when no sickness or death comes in our family, sometimes God will call you to leave your comfort zone. Who are these people in? These Israelites. The children there. Where are they at? They just left bondage. They're on their way to Canaan. They have left prison, going to the promise. Wait a minute. They left where they were, but they have not arrived where they were gone. I wonder, where do they put me? Well, according to my calculations, that puts them in between. In between. And I'm just trying to figure out where all of them, folks, all of my folks, they put me in between. 
between a rock and a hard place. Between being sick and being healed. Between healing from the old relation and finding peace in a new relationship. And between the habit of the addiction and finding new life and new hope and new peace and new joy. Let me say this this way. In Galatians 6 and 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. See, see, you are looking kind of strange to me like you already in Canaan. You are not back in Egypt. That's right. But don't front me. You not made it to Canaan yet. Those who think you understand better, be what? At least you follow. You, you better tell somebody, I'm in between right now. I'm in between already and not yet. And what I used to be and what I'm going to be. You see, is there anybody here that can testify, preacher, I'm just in between? I might not be the best with the person in here, but I'm still here. I have not arrived, but I did leave where I was. And I'm trying to get closer to God. And you see, I, I get some tired sometimes with these Christians. They, they, they act like they already arrived in Canaan. You, you had to arrive in Canaan as long as you're on the face of this earth. Hello, somebody. You were in between. And you see these same folks, they criticize the church. They criticize the choir. They criticize the usher. They criticize the pastor. But I, I tell you what, if, if you want to pay and send uh, a private detective to one of their houses, I find, and I'm going to tell you, you'll find out they are in between. Amen. You see, I don't care how much charge you talk, uh, how much money you make, what side of town you live in, you're still in between. Because if it was not for the grace of God, you would have some of the stuff that you have now. Deuteronomy 8. There are some areas in your life that we will discover that you are still in between. I'm in a process right now, but I'm between. In between, what do that mean, preacher? Well, I'm glad you had they are in between bondage and the promised land. You see, that, that's a fun and difficult, uh, dangerous place to be in when God got you in between. See, notice this here. God got them in between. Hello, somebody? You see, they had left bondage, but they still had a slave mentality. They had been down so long until they uh, now have to adjust to standing up. Uh -huh. They had been miserable so long until happiness was born to them. You see, you see, my brothers and sisters, sometimes when God tries to bless us, uh -huh. we try to turn it right down. Oh yeah. God said you a new man in your life, you've been having a bad relationship for a long time. He sent you somebody that's going to try to free tonight, and then you look at him like he must be dead. <laughs> you always going to find something wrong. Yeah. Simply because of the fact you have a twin. You know, some of us, you know, some of us, we, God bless us to get a new home or get a new car. We ought to be thankful that God bless us to do that. Right. 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 But God sent me today. You're on assignment. God told me to tell you that you got to adjust to your new season. When God bless you, then you are in a new season. Hello, somebody? If God bless you to 
have a new car. You in your new season. You ought to be thinking. Don't care about them haters. The ones who want to talk about you and talk down about you because they still back in Egypt. See, what you ought to do is you ought to tell them quick that it's my time. Because they don't know what you've been through. They don't know how many times you stayed up late at night praying when you couldn't sleep because you were calling out on God. So when God blessed me, I'm going to use what he blessed me with. When you start struggling half of your life and have, uh, uh, you've been faithful, you be driving a car, you feel good. Like yeah. But I come to tell you, let them haters stay behind. Now, now, you've been praying, fasting, work hard, and now that you got a little piece of something, the other trying to make you feel bad because they are stuck in the neutral and you are on your way, can't feel bad because you left Egypt and they want to stay in the comfort zone. Egypt now was bondage. But it was comfortable. Egypt now was bondage. But you didn't have a place to sleep. You were guaranteed three meals a day. Now that they got to leave bondage and take a chance of a head in uncertainty, but God is up there with them. Are you with the church? Now, I can figure this out. And God talked to Moses and told Moses, Moses, uh, you got to understand that this is going to be the hardest passage of all the time. Because you have to change the people thinking who've been in bondage so long. And you see, we've been in bondage so long until sometimes it's hard for us to get out. Look at us. Hundreds of years, we've been removed from slavery. Mm -hmm. But yet, for the most part, there's a slave mentality within our culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to keep doing the same old thing. Let me tell you something. Things change. Mm -hmm. And if you can't keep up with the changes, it's going to be kind of hard for you to make. Mm -hmm. But yet, for the most part, there is a slave mentality in our country. So in other words, what he's telling here, he said, Moses, dealing with this group of people who have a fertility mindset. Left Egypt, but Egypt have not left them. See, we say that we are saved, but do we act like we are saved? God said, look here, Moses. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire by night. I'm going to clothe myself in the cloud. Don't miss this because most people preach this wrong. It was not a cloud and fire plural. It was a singular cloud that turned into we can't say it was not a cloud and a pillar of fire. It was a cloud that turned into fire. You've been watching two sources too long. And sometimes we get hooked up. God says, I, I may come in different ways. But he go on and say, but, I'm, but it's still me. Sometimes I deal with you in the night one way. In the daytime of your life, another way. But he said, but it's still me. And your problem is you've been looking at two sources for too long. You, you've been looking at the wrong thing for too long. Me and your man. Me and your family. God said, no, it's me. He said, sometimes I'm your job, and sometimes uh, I'm your mutual farm, but it's me. Y'all are missing this. In other words, what I'm saying is that no matter how you got 
your blessings. It was God that gave you the blessing. God gave you through your job. He blessed you through your job. Somebody else. And you know, it ain't kind of strange that you're looking for something and you don't know how you're going to make it in meet and all of a sudden you get a check in the mail. Mm -hmm. Nobody but God. So in other words, God was telling them when they ever said move, then move. He said, I'm going to be the cloud in the daytime and the fire at night. Here's how it's going to work. The cloud moves, then you move. The pillar of fire moves. So, so, so they will be walking with the cloud. Millions of people for them, probably about three million. The cloud stopped. And what happened is they unpacked. Take your beds out. Get a job, some food, and lay out and chill. Then all of a sudden, they're cooking. They're washing clothes, looking up. And it's time for them to roll. Sometimes in the middle of the night, the pillar of fire will just start moving. In the morning, they had to pack up early, wake up. Y'all, the fire is moving. In other words, when it moves, then you need to move. Moving why? Where he wants you to move. Right. Can I preach this here to somebody? Because God never said that there, uh, 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 where he was going to make it. He did not tell them. But he sent them the wrong way. Let me get that right. He sent them the wrong way. Not the wrong way in spirit but the wrong way in the neutral. Because what looks wrong to man may be right to God. See, you got to understand that the shortest route to the land of Canaan was through the territory of the Philistines. So in the direction of Beersheba, that was the shortest route to where they were going. But what happened is that route chosen by God was sought east toward Sinai, or why preacher, to avoid the possibilities of mil uh, mil uh, uh, materialistic confrontations with the Egyptians. In other words, he didn't want them to go back where they come from. Because they would encourage people with shallow minds to talk vision to go back. Mm -hmm. Kind of like this Sunday school lesson. They, they always if somebody do wrong, they always want you to do wrong with them. Uh -huh. Amen. That's, that, that's, that, that's why I, I stopped crying about people who left me early on my life and they walked away. You see, we need to start thanking God for what he has blessed us to have. That is why. That is why, church, uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 66, it says, make a job of noise unto the Lord. You see, somebody ought to be thanking God right now. You ought to be thanking God for what he has done for you in your life. Oh, if he blessed you and protected you and he put a shield around you. If God kept you from falling in the hands of someone who was going to mistreat you. He put a shield around you. You see, God has a way to let you go around some people. Have you ever thought about the fact that you woke up early one morning and you normally travel down East Monroe or High Street? But that day God got you up early and you took the loop and you went all the way around town. And then later on, uh, when you read your paper, or you listened to the news, you found out that it was a bad wreck on that same road that you traveled on. And what I'm trying to tell you, that God has a way of taking you around some stuff that's a bad situation. It's not that God didn't love the one that was killed. But he wasn't through with you yet. And what I'm trying to say is you ought to be glad that God is not through with you yet. 
Am I right about it? Uh, is there anybody here who knows that some of the things that you have been through, uh, if it hadn't been, uh, it hadn't been somebody else, uh, they wouldn't be able to go through them. Am I right about it? Uh, is it anybody here uh, that know that God has blessed you in your life uh, all the way? Am I right about it? Uh, is it anybody here uh, that knows church that God will be with you all of the way? Am I right about it? Uh, I'm trying to get ready uh, to go and take my seat. But I remember uh, it was like over 2,000 years ago. Am I right about it? Uh, there was a meeting going on uh, up in heaven. Am I right about it? Uh, they tell me uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost were there. Am I right about it? Uh, and they were deciding uh, who was they going to send down to heaven and the earth to save mankind uh, from their sins. Am I right about it? Uh, they began church uh, to look at Abraham. Am I right about it? Uh, they could not uh, send Abraham uh, because you remember Abraham told a lie about his wife being uh, about his wife church. Am I right about it? Uh, and my brothers and sisters, somebody said, uh, why don't we send Moses? Am I right about it? Uh, Moses, he couldn't come uh, because you remember Moses killed a man. Am I right about it?
stands over you. Right now. Sometimes when you stand up, things change, amen? Things change, but she knew what she had to do. She knew that she had to accept Christ as her personal savior. She knew, church, that she had to believe in God, she had to believe in Jesus Christ, and that she had to be up. And once you do that, then you acknowledge your sins. Somebody find me, Romans 10, Nine in the Bible. And we want to do it the right way. Now, see, this is one, this is one of the most important things in your life. Accepting Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. And when you do it, you want to do it right. 
Because if, if you don't do it right, you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up somewhere down the line. That's why sometimes you see people, they come up here, they don't fight. They cry and, and then they, they come up here and they don't fight. And you don't see them no more for two or three months. Some, some ain't right with this picture. Who got Romans 10 and 10 and 9? Thou shalt what? Confess. Confess what? With thy mouth. With thy mouth. Lord the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thy heart. And shall believe in thy heart. That God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And believe in thy mouth. That God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. You, 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 you know that now. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe that 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 that. That he came and he died and he rose up on that third day. You believe that, don't you? Amen. If you believe in that, if you believe in that character, you shall be saved. Right. And, you, and remember this here. All of us were born sinners. But we were saved by grace. Amen. That's what we were. We were saved by grace. And so what we need to do is we need to just obey God. And I told her to listen to her mother. Listen to her mother and listen to her mother and grandmother because they serve God. See, the key is that everybody has to accept Christ themselves. They have to accept Christ themselves. Amen. I did it when I was little because everybody else would. But she's doing the right thing, so what we're going to do, I'm not going to hold this long with her. What she's doing is, is, is she's going to Christ. What we're going to do is we're going to baptize her next week. We're going to baptize her next week. Amen. Because I don't want to hold it too long, amen. But we're going to have the water ready and stuff. We're going to baptize her the right way. We didn't do it because I had messed up, amen. You know, I was trying to say him a mess with me. He'll mess with me like he was messing with me today, amen. He'll mess with me. He'll try to keep me from uh, uh, saying what I need to be saying, amen. 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 But thank God, I thank God that he blessed us to be able to go through it, amen. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Next Sunday. Next Sunday we have baptism. Okay.
We thank you for stepping in with us when Sam tried to detour us and tried to get us off track. And you stayed right there, right here with us, and we want to say thank you. Thank you for the words that were said. Thank you for the love. And then we thank you for your child, Sister Mom. We thank you, God, for being with her. You blessed her. You touched her heart this morning when she got up. After losing a loved one, she came to the house of wishing. She prays in your holy divine name. And we thank you for doing what you did. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for what you're going to do. Yes, and then, God, when we leave here, we pray and we pray and we pray that you just wrap your arms around her and be with her. Yes, we thank you, God. And we love you. Yes, we lift up your name. We magnify you. We give you the glory. In the name of Jesus. Not only her, but this whole church. Our visitors and our friends, our loved ones. We pray, God, that you just bless them. And the one who's on the sick list, the proudest, we pray, God, whatever city they may be in, all in Texas County, all in Paris, Texas, everywhere that they may be, we pray that you just bless them in a mighty special way. Help us, God. Thank you. We love you. Much prayer. Much power. Much power. Little prayer. Little, Little power. No prayer. No power. In the name of Jesus.